Hello, welcome to 30 Minutes. I'm Rick Anthony. Uh, my guest today is Dr. Hillard Ponce, who is a good friend, has been a frequent guest on uh, 30 Minutes. We've talked about a variety of things, most of which are items that are of particular interest to him, usually of little interest to me, but hopefully of some interest to uh, our viewers. And, and don't say what it's, uh, I just gave you. I just gave you a line. Hillard, welcome, as always. <laughs> and uh, welcome to kicking so off. So you're the, using the plural now yes, for yes, your viewer. Yes. Welcome to kicking off the new year, 2019. This is our first, uh, this is our, our first show of the, the, of the, the newest the year. The real, yes, right. of the new show. Right. Uh, you always come prepared uh, with things you want to talk about. I have something I'd like to talk about, and hopefully they will dovetail. There was really a fascinating article in the Inquirer. Or the Wall Street Journal. Uh, that's what I said. It was called the Wall Street Journal. <laughs> we, we get both of them. <laughs> See? And it was called In Praise of Hierarchy. And, and the point of the article, one of the points of the article was, in this era of <laughs> near anarchy, uh, when networks are taking over and tearing down hierarchies, institutions, just about everyone in our culture uh, that we've been accustomed to, from politics to religion to uh, corporations, et cetera, et cetera that even those networks, the, the groups that seem to come out of nowhere uh, in pursuit of an idea, cause some complaint, some grievance, it, to be successful have to take on a hierarchy. They have to have structure. They have to have leadership. All the things that the people who are against institutions uh, say are, are wrong, they have to adopt the same principles, the same tenets, in order to survive and grow. Am I making myself clear? Yeah, perfectly it, clear. It, it's, yeah. it's an interesting uh, yeah. incongruity. Very interesting. Uh, I only skimmed this article. I'm glad you shared it with me. And it's written by a star, uh, Neil Ferguson, who uh, has a, had a piece in this past week, I want to say, in the New York Times Book Review, commenting in an erudite way on some other matter. But he's, he's a talking head. He's one of mm -hmm. these characters who rises above the rest of us every now and then in one of the gatekeeper institutions and lets us know wh how to keep score and where we are now. And apparently this is his new book. And his argument is that in the chaos, as you described it, there could be discerned some, what he calls, I guess, towers or yes. places, locations of a new leadership or something like that. Uh, as usual with him, it sounds very smart. But uh, I... Uh, What's his background? Is, is he a sociologist? I think he's he a historian. It actually t it doesn't tell you here. No, it doesn't. I, my, I want to say he's a historian, if not a political scientist, and I want to say he's at Yale, but I could be wrong. Okay. Continue. Uh, and so, so, so I think that's a really useful jumping off point. Uh, he's talking in global, macro, institutional terms, and I want to talk about the same ideas in, in, in more personal terms. The mm -hmm. level of the uh, unit of analysis would equal the individual. Unit of analysis for him would be states and nations and institutions. Mm -hmm. So with, as long as you allow me that difference, I'd, I'd, I'd love to okay. chime in on something, on a conversation he's just started. So last year and uh, the year before, most of, gosh, it, it, it's, it's a becoming a haze. The year, two year, within the last two calendar years, we've had these fascinating conversations on the American electorate, the American political system, yes. and as a consequence of that, communication, social media, new fangled um, technologies, stuff like that. Right? You remember this? Yes. Do you? Okay. And one of the two, one of the bright things that happened in that in those conversations were our focus on this thing happening in real time the rise of these the effects of these new um, social um, social co constructs I want to say social communications and we were noting that with the Hillary campaign the mm, takeaway might be that um, some of her followers seem to have used social media to Further, there, further along an agenda she, I claim, shep yes. shepherded, which was, you know, the role of women in the new political arena, and I even noted fancifully the dancing Hillary's, which you claim to know nothing about and see no <laughs> big future about. And here we are with the Me Too movement and the Time's Up movement. I rest my case. <laughs> well, that's another show. 
it was a past tense. We already did that show. So oh. one of us was, shall we'll we say, pressing it. So one of us was pressing it. And, and the second element of the Hillary experience was the vulnerability of this new world to virtually anybody anywhere on the planet being able to have a say in your conversations now that you've decided to have them on these platforms, right? So that was one thing. The second big item was the, the lessons from the Trump campaign, which were the, the use, what if your leader likes Twitter, right? The use of social communication uh, technology to send messaging, shall we say, downstream. So just to keep things simple, we're gonna claim the Hillary campaign lets us see what happens when messaging goes flat and then upstream. Flat we mean to people mm -hmm. talking with each other, thinking about what they wanna do, and downstream meaning that boss, which is what N Neil is mainly, mainly worried about, sending messages down to everybody, being able to be a, a, a leader, a leader taking advantage of the new, t new communications. Now that, it seems to me, sets the table for a fairly rich conversation, wouldn't you say? I actually did. Well, if I had Thanksgiving parties like this, I would, <laughs> <laughs> I'd be very happy. <laughs> okay, so let's, let's now f digest what we put on the table, right. okay? Like the metaphors? Yeah, go ahead. Okay, so um, Twitter, which is something that I actually monitor. I don't tweet, I'm not allowed to tweet. My family has given me strong instructions. Thou shalt not tweet. You can get Why? Because you can get in pretty big trouble pretty easily. Well, yeah, okay. Go People ahead. don't trust me, apparently, with the <laughs> smartphones. <laughs> and, right. and, uh, but the current president is a master of the tweet. It would seem so. No, it is so, and it's brilliant in its way. I mean, he gets himself in quite a lot of trouble, but he's managed to preside over, to use it as an instrument in the creation of a successful political uh, movement. So you got to note that, seems to me. So let's, let's call Twitter a location for top-down mm. communication. I almost wish I could stop you there and just, just zero in on what you just said, but it'll take us in another direction. Go ahead. Okay, so can we yeah, yeah. set it up? Okay. okay. So, 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 and it's called a theory. Cause that, 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 that allows you room to say, mm -hmm. well, I don't agree with that. Or where's your evidence? Mm -hmm. We're happy to respond to that. So, so we're going to claim that Twitter is, is an example of what Ni Neil's talking about. Because he's claiming that these, there are these towers in this chaos created by the new social communication arena. And I would say, well, if he, if you like his metaphor, then Twitter would fit that pretty nicely because it, it would be a place for a new, uh, a, a, a new era leader being able to sh get to a commanding height. So Twitter lets you send messages downward. And, and, and I can actually, I think, make this a little clearer for you. I remember, because I have gray hair, so I, can, I was there when it happened. Mm -hmm. I can remember the rise of email. Can you? Yes. What I noticed right away, I don't know if, if, if you picked up on it, at what, what, what point you picked up on it, but I was at, a, I was at Brandeis University when, when email really emerged in the 80s as a way of talking. And I noticed that in my uh, email account, I had the address of the president of the university. I had the president, the address of my chairman, all that stuff. And before email came along, if I wanted to talk to the president or the chairman of my department, mm -hmm. I was going to have to send a, uh, a physical mail thing mm -hmm. or hope to run into them in the hallway or a party or something. It's going to take effort to get through the layers of institution between me and them. Email flattened, yes. flattened the conversation with one keystroke. You could talk to the person at any level of your institution and you could create an audience. So email was the first sign of this. Mm -hmm thing he's talking about. But it's a very you, you, easy way to get through what I'm talking about. So email is in a way what Facebook is now and it allows you to get through the chatter, to get through to people. But most importantly, it allows you to create a group effect, right? It's a yes. flattening kind of thing. I got my, what do they call them? And on email, my wall or whatever the Facebook thing is. And, and Facebook is just the tip of some social media iceberg. There's, there, are, there are applications that are meant mm -hmm. for people like us to not know anything about. Snapchat, Instachat, mm -hmm. mm -hmm. stuff that we would get in trouble 
easily if we tried to do it. Some of it is meant to not stay around long. There's one of these apps that just you send something and it disappears in case you make a mistake. <laughs> <laughs> I think I should learn that one. <laughs> so, so that's one metaphor, kind of a flattening yes. metaphor, allowing, if you use it right, communications to develop laterally, create a crowd, and if you're skillful, I guess, you could make that message go up to somebody, create a movement or something like that. But to me, anyway, Twitter sounds to me like, uh, in, in when you, before you and I had gray hair, they used to have this thing called the Wire. Do you remember The Wire, the Associated Press, United yeah, Press? Sure. What were the What was The Wire? It was a syndicated way of getting information out. And if you were in a certain kind of room that had one of these wires, do you remember that it was a box of some sort, well, it, and, and it would type ticker. automatically, right? Yeah. Right, and it would ring bells if there ring was a, a bell. Right, right, right. Yes. And so Twitter, to my mind, is the modern version mm -hmm. of the wire. It says, bing, 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 here's a hot <coughs> one, because it mm -hmm. has, you know, the, yeah. the short list and stuff. But it lets people send out notices that get your attention, right. cut through the n noise of an arena. Well, if you're a, if you're a leader, if you're a, a There's a difference, though. In the day of the wire, uh, culturally, there was an understanding that if it was coming over the wire, it was probably important, worth paying attention to. So if you heard the ticker and you saw the tape, somebody was paying attention to it because it was important, interesting, notable information. That's certainly not the case today. No, no, but think about because that. We're no, no. Bombarded no, no, but by think about that. Trivia. You, you, no, you got it. You got it. You no, figured it out. I did it again. You no, this is this is exactly the point. The secret of Twitter is if you in the in the noisy room that yes. Twitter cre created, if you can somehow create the illusion or uh, the reality mm -hmm. that you're the guy ringing the bell, mm -hmm. right? You're the tower. Yeah, if you get the certain number of followers and when yes. your followers hear your stuff, they think you know what you're talking about. And that's the magic, think you know what you're talking about. <laughs> then, you, then you have really managed to, in a digital arena, create mm -hmm, the effects mm -hmm. of the wire. So that's why that's a very tricky metaphor because you'd, there are conditions that you'd have to apply yes. in Twitter that you wouldn't have had, that you didn't have to apply if you were talking about you know, the 20th century version of Twitter. So those are the kind of scripts that you would say why Neil may be on to something, that we, that the underpinnings of this so-called new arena are some old dynamics, which are, mm -hmm. do I create things from the bottom and send messages to the top, meaning I create social movements, or do I, uh, go top down and do I try to send messages from a leader or you know an authority figure and get others to do something or think a certain way. Now the positive thing about that is these are wonderful new tools and um, we can you know imagine, only imagine what we'll reap from them uh, and the obvious flip side of that is they can easily be manipulated and corrupted the case of um, the Russians infiltrating our political system mm -hmm. is the one example. And the other is if your leader <laughs> is, <laughs> um, is a, um, not a not a careful thinker. <laughs> and, and sits down. Don't go political on me. <laughs> <laughs> Do so, not go political so on I, me. So I don't have to finish that thought. <laughs> but th th those are the, the boundaries of the conversation. What's good about <coughs> it, what's <coughs> risky about it, <coughs> but there you are. And it's, it's, uh, it, it says Neil is on to something, except he takes it at, at, at a different level of analysis. Mm -hmm. But yeah, that's, that's what I think if you had to look backwards and say, well, what happened with, to all those conversations we were having in the past few years involving an election? I would say that's, that's, the, that's one, those are, that's a way to summarize one of the big takeaways. But, but if what we're seeing, what we're experiencing is another example of a pendulum swinging in one direction. Do you see this pendulum swinging back? Not when really. we will we'll meet the point of singularity? Yeah, no, no, no. no. Once you introduce a... Once you, with once social you, media? Once you introduce the, a game changer, right? Like, I don't know, <laughs> the printing press. <laughs> you don't go back. <coughs> but you, but the, uh, here's where the adjustments will come. If, if, you, if you'd... Let go, me go ahead. You want go me? Ahead. Okay. No, no, go ahead. All right. The, re the real problem with these... Th these are just tools, these things, these platforms. They're just tools. 
The real problem is the, w the nature of change in our society, the people using these tools and for what purpose. And I would argue the reason we're really vulnerable to outside forces like say the Russians is because our country is undergoing major demographic political uh, yes. changes. Yes. Like, I'm saying only those two because I actually think words matter. And so I know about a demographic shift mm -hmm. big time and I know about political uh, changes big time. I'm not so sure about other things like are there some social change going on? I, I don't, there is, but it, I don't know anything about it. So, so, so those, that's the real issue there. And so if you have new tools and a, 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 a changing fundamental in changing fundamentals about your society, the interaction of those two things is where was where the is, um, it, are, are the are the um, problems I would suspect mm -hmm. that would worry you. But the tools themselves, they're benign. I mean, you can take the it's a tool. You can write. You can use your pen to write something toxic yes. or something poetic. But the social changes. Uh, focus on that for a moment. I said political and demographic. Well, you you did, but if. But a demographic, a significant transform, transformative demographic change, as mm -hmm. we're seeing now. Yeah. As the older generation is being moved out. Right. Millennials are coming in. Right. Even Gen X uh, is becoming more influential than they were before. Gen X is younger than millennials. Is that no, the deal? No, They're older they're than millennials. Older, right. Okay. They're between the millennials and the baby boomers. Are they the silent? <laughs> the well, well, they silent. have. That, that's exactly the point. They've kind of been the, the lost generation. Oh, that's too They bad. were somewhere between oh, the boomers oh. and the millennials. The poor babies. They're also the smallest of the three oh. in terms of numbers. But the point is, as that happens, as, the, as, as most of the Senate, most of the House, most of the political leaders and corporate leaders in this country, in all societies, are, are moving out and they're being replaced by Gen Xs and increasingly older millennials, particularly in tech companies and more sophisticated, et cetera. That is a, that's a seismic change right. in our society because right. of the value systems they bring into those institutions. Right, right. and, 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 and it will play out in policies, in right. strategies, in fiscal policy, et cetera, at the government level. Add to that, again, you would know much more about this than I, What's happening with the, uh, the female, the 50% the of our Wait, population? Wait, I would know more about. Yeah, because you're a student. You're a student of social change. So, social you know, they, they, change. that's why that's why comedians will never lose jobs because <laughs> there's material here, <laughs> and and I don't know what to do. <clears> with I'll it. give you credit for knowing more than I do about it. <laughs> but, but but that is certainly seismic as well. Once again, the number of women, young women. Uh, later millennials and some Gen Xs who are running for political office are moving up the corporate ladder and now the heads of corporations, both large and small. That is a significant change, largely in this value systems they bring to those institutions. Yeah, so, it's, but actually. And, 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 and a, I'm sorry, one more thing, because we mentioned this before we went on. One result of that, in my opinion, is the impact it has on the definition of and the self-image of men in this society. Hmm. What role do we have now uh, as, as a man in a society that is increasingly, I'm not saying it's a bad thing, but mm -hmm. will increasingly be dominated by uh, females? Hmm. So, so, so I actually want to add one more to this, to these building blocks of a new society. So there are these, hmm. what, you, what people would call horizontal layers, uh, age, age cohorts, right. anybody can be in it. Right. You know, once you're, Okay. Another one are then <coughs> vertical uh, things, and gender mm -hmm. would be one of them, and of course ethnicity would be right. quite another. And the strains on a system, as as it as it um, as these forces kind of, uh, you know, like a metaphor of a tectonic plates, tectonic plates yeah. sh grinding against each other and mm -hmm. all that create the good metaphor. Appreciate that. Uh, um, uh, you know, create the stuff that we that lets people like us sit down and talk mm -hmm. about it. So on the gender front, the um, I'm not sure there's a real connection between uh, the issue of gender I issues rela relating to gender and male identity. But uh, but I saw what you were trying to do, and I'll like, I, then I can respond. To me, the um, the the th there there's you know it's funny two guys sitting here talking about what gender, but got to start somewhere. I would, what I would like to, the experiment I would like to run, here's the experiment I would run. 
what would happen if the President of the United States apologized for mistreating females? Just saying. Just saying. Just throwing mm -hmm. it out there. Mm -hmm. Would that change anything? You mean the allegations? Whatever. I mean, I tried to, I'm trying to be polite about this. But I'm wondering if there's a, 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 a sort of a metaphor of a cap. In other words, if you're um, trying to t imagine a, the future for, you know, yes. uh, l fewer boundaries, <coughs> fewer mm -hmm. ceilings, I think that's mm -hmm. the metaphor, fewer glass ceilings on th the possibilities for our daughters, our wives, right. and our sisters. Uh, well, one of the things they're probably, I don't have a sister, and my mother's dead, and my wife is nice to me. She doesn't really. <laughs> 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 I know your wife. <laughs> she's very. It she's takes very, quite an effort. <laughs> yes, I've met your wife, but I have my <laughs> views about things. So, so, so imagine, mm. um, you know, they're they're monitoring this ceiling that that that's right. obvious to most of us. Mm -hmm. And one of the caps on the ceiling is, um, uh, well, the very leader of the country is in probably making choices that. They, that, that, that one might imagine is holding not good for women. I'll just put mm -hmm. it out there mm -hmm. like that. So if, if, the, if that thing ex goes off, uh, either you know, the president is in some way made to uh, uh, lose his job or admit to being inappropriate and decides he will spearhead some new adjustment. I'm, I'm trying to, I'm using euphemisms because I just don't really want to, it's not, it's not our turf that you should have female, uh, somebody who really knows this stuff. But the point, uh, the, the, the only observation I'm wondering is if, if, if the White House became neutral or less toxic for women, would that change anything about the Me Too movement and the Time's Up movement? In other words, th right now, you know, if you 20 years ago were inappropriate and you're a significant person, you can lose your job. But that's, uh, that's, I don't see that as a sustainable project. And I just wonder once the presidency is squared away, will that, will that, will that? Really, you, you think it's the presidency, the incumbent? I think, I, 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 it's an experiment. The instigator of all of this? I think, I, I'm, a man, I'm, a, I'm, a, I'm wondering is what I'm, is what mm. I'm doing. In other words, there's, a, there's an obvious change. You're under, not asserting uh, that, you're just. It's an experiment, yeah. yeah. My, 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 my hypothesis would be, I, b I wonder if that's a big factor in this. Bec 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 there, mm. there are, um, you know, there are obvious d baseline changes. That's what we were yes. talking about earlier. And gender is right on schedule. You, you know, we're seeing m increasing equality, and with a lot, of, a lot to go yeah. of location in the authority system, uh, earnings get reduction in earnings gaps, all, all kinds of measures of equality based on gender mm -hmm. that you can imagine, as, that you can imagine, and then the, the idea is, let's measure progress. Mm -hmm. and, I, and I would assume that over time, there's been improvement with more to come. That's, that's, that would be the baseline condition. So to see then um, uh, shouts and murmurs and upset and all that, my read on that is, well, what's goading that? And I would, I would imagine it, I would, my thought would be, well, I wonder if some, has some of this to do with the presidency and the nature of his behavior, that kind of stuff. Beyond, um, beyond that, to this other issue you wanted to raise, well, does that affect men and their identity or something like that? Yes. I don't think there, I wouldn't draw a straight line <coughs> parallel to mm -hmm. that. I would argue instead that the change in the nature of what it means to be male was, it's a project that is associated more with education, uh, changing it, changes in how we make money. If, there's a period when you needed muscles to make money, right? right? And that yeah. was a guy. Guys have bigger muscles, just mm -hmm, saying. Mm -hmm. But the, so as soon as you made the location of real money up here, it, it, I'm not convinced I need a guy to figure out how to make my company make money if it's about the ability to think. So to me, it's pretty simple. If you're changing what makes you the money, the, the, pro, the skills associated with, you know, the op absence yeah, of muscle, I, I see your point. then both men and women are going to have to operate point. very differently, it uh, seems to and me. And I agree with it. I okay. agree with your point. All right. That's a rare thing. Let's and not, it, let's it, not it, let that happen write to that down. Yeah. Uh, but there is this aberration, and I hope it's temporary, mm -hmm. uh, where the, there's, 
the movement, what do you call it, the Me Too movement? And the Time's Up movement. Uh, like many of the social changes and uh -huh. the movements that are fed right. by social media, et cetera, uh, we're, we're, we're heading into a, a, a time that we've never been before. Okay, I'm going to cut you off at the pass. And I'm not sure. No, I, I'm, gonna, I'm interrupting because that means I think you're, not, you, you're, you're tracking in a really bad way really fast. Okay. And, and, and I'm just going to note <clears throat> what got said earlier. Forgive in me. In case people weren't listening. Yes, yes. Yeah. <laughs> the, the, the point is that um, you could, there's, there's a, let's, let's, say, let's invent a metric, pace of change or pace of okay. some kind of metaphor okay. of velocity. Mm -hmm. Like I'm, it's not just I'm generic, I'm interested in a change in, within my lifetime, but I, I want change now. Mm -hmm. I'm really upset. And I would argue that the, that the spur in the, um, at least, uh, the spur in the polity right now is the is the current president, and and it and it wasn't just this current president. It's been the president per se because it's the capstone to the consequences of these many changes we've been talking about. And at bottom is what kind of country are we going to be, be? What where where will the future be? Where will power be? How will negotiations occur? How will we settle all this change we've got going? Yes. And um, one well, bet we made as a society <coughs> was I would all. I'm still having trouble, though, because you seem to be laying all of it at the White House, the presidency, this, this particular incumbent. As a capstone, as an well, easy way to what measure. What about the entire entertainment industry? What about corporate America, where many of the sure. no, biggest no. names well, in, then, no, but here's uh, the have thing, been taken yeah, out? Yeah, so here's the thing. Because yeah, of yeah. allegations, yeah, yeah. accusations, so here, and so, sins so, of the so past. Th that's it's so pervasive. That's my concern. Okay, so that would make it. It seems to be out of control, where even an allegation can ruin a person's life. Okay, so 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 you, you we call that a stipulation. We, we can say, yeah, we okay. that's, those are things we can, anybody can observe. You're, the two people watching your show can see that <laughs> for themselves, right? <laughs> it's, you, it's a new year. Have you, it's you, a new year. There's always hope, eh? <clears throat> they have friends. Have you? <laughs> and, I, I, one of the reasons you come back home is because there are two people who watch I you. Bring, I, bring, I bring my, my you, you crack. You do. You bring, I have a, you bring your audience. Yes, that's right. right. <laughs> this is for, this, I do it for my people. <laughs> so, All right. yeah. so, 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 do you so remember this, what you were saying? So this is, this, is, this is what makes actually being a show useful for me. I mean, no, because this, this is actually, a, for me, a useful conversation. And so um, the, the, the thought I, had, I put on the table was, suppose the, um, what you're perceiving as a wrong turn or a problem or some, I, I can't mimic your language, but you were pretty worried about all this and it wasn't gonna stop and it was yada yada. And, and I looked at it and I thought very differently. I said, you know, um, there was a time when uh, the, the Weinstein guy uh, I don't remember his first name. Har Har uh, Harvey. Harvey. Yeah. Harvey. Harvey. Right. When Harvey was ruling a roost, mm -hmm. I mean, it, an abusive, mm -hmm. awful mm -hmm. way, mm -hmm. right? And people apparently knew about it, and they just said, look, it's the cost of doing business in Hollywood. Including a number of women. I, I, you elaborate, I, but the main point stands. So, so, so Harvey's day is over. Right, Harvey is no longer <laughs> running things, <laughs> and and his way of doing business in Hollywood is under assault. Yes. Right, and and the tools of the assault can be a j'accuse, right? I just I just merely say something, or I have a mm -hmm. memory, whatever. Mm -hmm. And you can have views about is that any way to run a company or a business or a justice system? That's another show. But I understand your complaint makes perfect sense to me. But it's a complaint, and it two sides every story. And, um, and my understanding is that if you were a young woman, and since you a lot thought that I had empathy with women greater than yours, let's turn the tables and let's imagine you mm -hmm. as, an, as, an, as an attractive <coughs> young me. woman in Hollywood in the previous century. I have to think about that for a minute <laughs> to let it sink in, but let's imagine it, right? You have and, 30, 30 seconds. And you had to deal with the Harveys of the world. Do you know how women back then dealt with it? They didn't. They did. Do you know how they did? They had a they had a network, a rumored network, where if you were plugged in, they would say to you, "Watch mm. out for okay. him." And all that's happening now is that that <clears throat> network, which mm -hmm. protected or they tried to use and it 
failed them in some ways. It's not going public. It's just not going public, right? And, and you could argue, well, if it goes public and we obey, abide by it, do we still need it? So I, I'm, I would argue it's a work in progress. I, I think it's more than that. I really do. Well, well you're right. It's a subject for another, another show. show. And you're right. Probably we should probably have a woman sitting at the table as well. You know, I'm not sharing my hour here. <laughs> this is that's that's a thought, but no. We'll do an hour show then. No, right. this is my time, <clears throat> and okay. I'm you're, you're guarding up. it jealously. I, I don't know what. To put. Uh, thank you very much. No, always it's a, a pleasure. pleasure. Is mine. Uh, as always, we end these conversations too abruptly, having come to no conclusions. But there's always an opportunity to spill over to another show. It's your show. I'm <clears throat> I'm just your guest. Uh, this has been uh, 30 Minutes. My guest today has been Dr. Hillard Ponce, who is a social and political researcher, publisher, lecturer, uh, raconteur, and he makes a heck of a barbecue as well. Until next time, take very good care of yourselves. <laughs>